Last but not least, Mr. Balenciaga, Zach Williams. Now, the the marquee edition in 2021 had a not bad start in his first two rounds and then kind of fell off a cliff, if we're, if we're being honest. My opinion on it is that we, we, we um, picked a midfielder that has played one good game in the midfield and expected and expected him to play full season of all Australian level midfield. And for me, it was a, although the optimism was there from the start, it was kind of a, like it, it was broken before it started, in my opinion. Yeah. And especially when you look at that trade period and you see the likes of Adam Trelaw going to the Western Bulldogs for absolutely nothing. I mean, we, we invested a lot in Zach Williams. Yeah. And I think he falls under that same category as Mitch McGovern from the previous video where it's not like these young guys where they've got, they have to fight for their list on the spot. They have to fight for their spot on the list. It, he's in the category where we, he has the spot on the list because we've signed him to an extended contract and we're paying him a lot of money. So yeah. he has to live up to those expectations regardless. There's no ifs or buts or maybe we'll drop him. We can't let that happen. He has to succeed. And I feel as though his mental battles with himself last year prevented him from reaching those expectations that we have as fans and the coaches had in him. And again, he was almost destined to fail from the start of last season because, yeah. like you said, he's had one game in the midfield where he played well in that, in that elimination final. And apart from that, he had no experience there whatsoever and he didn't have the fitness to back himself in. So yeah. it was kind of like, you know what, we've paid a lot of money for you. Here you go in the midfield, do your best. And then we saw that he just his effort wasn't there because his, his, his um, stamina wasn't there. He wasn't in the right condition. And then he got put back at half back, and we thought that that would give him a bit of confidence and then he'd regain his spot in the midfield, but that just never happened either. Yeah. So what, what are you looking for in the future? Are you looking for him to, to break into that midfield or do you think that his, his role lies on the half back? I think you've got to give it one more one more chance. You can't invest that much money on a midfielder and then play him off half back for the rest of his time. You've got to yeah. give it like he's got one more chance to break into the midfield. I think Voss will have a if he hasn't already, he like he will have a like a real character di like player dissection of him and like what is he good at? And we all know his assets. Like he's very explosive. He's got a good kick. He's very quick. But is he like you can't give up on him yet? I think he's been, he's had one season, an interrupted season. Like people forget that he ha didn't have consistency, and it all came to a head in that game against the Western Western Bulldogs when he had like eight touches or something in the midfield, yeah. and that was the moment where all oh, right, okay, and I think he. he he was lucky in that game as well because of the nature of it, because we were winning and we were playing well. And if if that game had gone differently where we got pumped by hundred points or something and he had eight and he had eight touches, geez, there would have been a lot of a lot of talk and there already was, right? So yeah. he's got one more chance in the midfield. That's my thoughts on it. Yeah, and it doesn't help that you've got people like Jonathan Brown coming out and saying that he's the laziest player he's ever seen in his yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's got to play with your your, your mental. And um, yeah. like you said, we've we've invested heavily in a rebound defender already in Adam Saad in the same trade period. So yeah. it kind of baffles me that that that's where his his future lies in terms of the club. I think David Teague saw him as a consistent halfback. And yeah. it's like, well, hang on, we've just traded pick six and paying Adam Saad 600, 700K a year. Why would Zach Williams when we've already done that with Saad? I mean, it just didn't make any sense to me. But yeah. we couldn't we couldn't persist with him, like you said, after that Western Bulldogs game with him playing in the midfield because he just wasn't performing. So I agree. I think he's got one more shot to prove himself in that midfield and we're stuck with him for a long time, so he'd better bloody do it. Yeah. Do, there's been talk that obviously him and Jack Martin for me are very similar in terms of their career so far at Carlton. They've had that those couple of games where they've killed it, right? And then there's always been that are they fit enough? Do they care enough type thing? Are they playing in the right position? I think they're again they're in a very similar scenario. The reason why I brought that up was do you think Zach Williams could play in the in, in the forward line at all? Not forward line, no. Not nah, forward line. I really don't. At that point, think... I feel like we're just experimenting with him for the sake of experimenting with him. I yeah. think that 
he he has to focus on getting into that midfield. That needs to be his sole focus. I mean, if we're if we're playing him around and we're saying you're going to be a small forward now, so we've tried to win the midfield, didn't work. We're not paying you 850k to be a defender. Let's chuck you in the forward line. Yeah. It's like what's that going to do his confidence? He needs yeah. to have that sole goal of I need to lock down a midfield spot, which is available there. I mean, he's got the talent for it. I don't yeah. see him being any less talented than an Adam Chera, for example. But yeah, Adam Chera has just shown and proven it that consistency. So if if Zach Williams has multiple goals to reach, it's not going to work for him. I think he's got to be really simple. Stick to the game plan. You are going to be a midfielder if you work hard enough. So yeah, that's where I think he lies. Yeah. So do do you think like he, like he has a pre, like this preseason, it has to be you are either a halfbackman or a midfielder. You're not a halfback that can play in the midfield or a midfielder that can play in the forward line for a bit. He has to be one of those, like like we speak about players like Walsh. Walsh is a midfielder. He's not a midfielder that can go forward like Cripps is a midfielder. As much as we try and put him forward, I don't think he'll work, right? Like Same like Adam Saad. He's a halfback flank, flanker. Do, we, do you think that Williams has to go in that bracket as well, where he's just a midfielder or he's just a halfbackman? Yes, I think so. I think that confusion in goals is the recipe for disaster. I think that any one of us can relate to that. I mean, if you're told, work your job and you might go here or you might go here, but just keep doing what you're doing, I mean, it's going to confuse you and it's not going to provide you with the same motivation. If he has one clear goal in mind and he has to work towards that, keep it very simple, I think that's the recipe for his success. I think that he needs to have that motivation within himself to get there because in that game, in that elimination final, he looks like one of the top 10 midfielders in the league. He's yep. breaking lines. He's he's, take the, he's breaking out of tackles. He's handballing it. He's kicking it. He's doing everything you need in a midfielder. And then he's also going forward and kicking some goals. So, yep. I mean, he's, he's that dangerous player that we've invested in. And that's what we expected from him last season. And it just never came. So, yep. I think that let's get rid of this, this notion that he can play anywhere because he's versatile. He might be versatile, but that's not what we've invested for. We've invested yep. for an A-grade midfielder, and that's what he needs to become. Yeah. So, do you think midf- the midfield is his, is his role? I think so. I think so. I think that think, that's what we need. Do you think he starts round one in the midfield? No, I don't. I think he's got to earn it. I don't think it's as it. simple as you're going to be in there round one. I think that Chera, Hewitt, Cripps... And while well, we've just heard before this video that Walsh <laughs> might not be playing their own one, but, you know, there's so many young midfielders fighting for a spot. Paddy Dow, Lockie O'Brien, Will Setterfield, Matt Kennedy, Ed Kerner, anyone can play in that position. So, yeah. and they've proven it more than Zach Williams has. But I think that he should be rotated through the midfield during the during round one. I don't think that he should be purely played off halfback. And I think that he should be given an opportunity at some time throughout the year. Yeah. What? Yeah, I think he's a very interesting case because... He, because of how underwhelming we were last year, it it was kind of amplified, and I think yes. you, that goes back to the Western Bulldogs game. He had eight touches. Under any normal circumstances, he would have been dropped. Right? He played the next week against Melbourne. Mm-hmm. So if like if we'd lost that game by hundred points, he's dropped, no questions asked. But because of the oh, we were up by five goals and we just let it slip in the last quarter, he was kind of hidden. And even, like, so it's tough. Like, it's really hard because it's a scenario where you've invest like, like with McGovern, you've invested so much money, you've invested time, and we've stuck by him because he's been injured. Like, his first two months, he was in, out, in, out, in, out with injury. He's got the assets to play in the midfield. He's got the assets to play as a half-backman. And I think it's, I think, personally, I think he won't play in the midfield this season purely because of Chera and Hewitt. I don't think we would have gone after them if Zach Williams was our midfield answer. But if Williams, if he proves me wrong, he plays in the midfield and he's all Australian by the end of the year, um, I'm, I'm the, I'll be the last one on the list complaining, trust me. But, yeah, yeah like, it's he's not in a scenario where a couple of others are on this list where it's make or break because even if he has a shit season, he'll be on the list next year. Just by the nature of, like, just the nature of him, him as a, and his contract and the history of him and everything like that. But any last thoughts on what he can achieve in twenty twenty two? I think that that he. I disagree with you here, Ari. I, I apologise, but I think that he will get that <laughs> from the midfield. I think that that yeah, there yeah. is enough rotation in there where I think Ed Kerner is going to be playing a lot more forward. 
than, than he will midfield. I think that he's in that phase out. We saw it happen with Murphy last year. I think that this is Ed Kerno's last year. And I think that Zach Williams will get his shot in the midfield, rotating throughout. Uh, just like we've given to Jack Martin, I think Zach Williams deserves that if he's if he's training hard and he's he's, he's showing himself on halfback. So I think that he'll, he'll have his shot. It depends whether he takes it or not. And that is completely up to him. There's no crystal balling this. It all depends yeah. on to his preparation and, and how much he believes in himself and how much consistency he can get. So, yeah, yeah there you go. A bit of a bit of uh, a differing opinion, but uh, it's good. Yeah, I, I hope he I hope he plays in the midfield because yeah. if he Wish does... Maybe, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, like we've seen, when he plays in the midfield, he plays well. He can break a game apart. Yeah. I just don't think he's got it in him just yet. And I want... I, like, I, you don't understand. This is the first time I've wanted to be wrong in my whole life. But yeah. I just... I just can't see it. It's like, my thought process is, why would we have got Chara and Hewitt if Williams was there? Because we've already got, like, your Kennedys, your Satterfield, your Dows. I don't... Like, maybe Hewitt, yes, but why Chara when Williams and Chara are still very similar players? And grant, granted, you could say that was because of Williams underperforming, but... My counter to that would be under a new coach, a new regime, a new training, like new training, new everything. He he might become a completely different player. But yeah, there there are our thoughts on Mr. Balenciaga in in 2022. Let us know yours in the comments below.